Good morning. My name is Matt, and I'm going to be talking today a bit about this class I'm putting together, Interactive Machine Learning, Compute 656. So this is the first time I'm teaching this class, so I'm very open to suggestions about what we should or should not cover. But the ultimate goal of this class is to recognize that human AI interaction is going to become more and more important. I'm most interested in those kinds of interactions when the AI agent is actually able to learn. So if we think about AIs can learn from scratch, they can learn completely autonomously, but since we're, they're going to be surrounded by humans, let's figure out how to leverage that. In order to do that, we need to understand what is possible and how humans and AI, learning AIs should work together. The main goal of this class is to be able to come up with a hypothesis that we can then test in a pilot study that has something to do with how humans and learning agents interact. It could be in a supervised learning setting. It could be a reinforcement learning setting. There's lots of different, different possibilities here. The ultimate goal then would be to figure out, is this hypothesis, is this idea that we come up with something that's worth putting the time into to try to get in, into a top venue like CHI or HRI or AAAI. In order to get there, we're going to have to cover a number of things. So thinking about, well, what does human AI interaction look like in general? And then how is it different when the agent is learning? If you have an interactive machine learning setting, what are the goals? What are you trying to do that's different when there's no human in the loop? What are different modalities? Are you uh, having a person interact with a mouse? Are you looking at a video of a person? Is the person uh, controlling a robot physically? Once we come up with a hypothesis, then we have to think about how do we design a study? How are we going to see whether our idea has any merit? Once we get those results, we need to think about how do we evaluate that study? Turns out humans, very messy data. We'll also think about what tools are there. So for instance, if I'm talking about crowdsourcing, getting multiple people involved, maybe from around the world, how do I get that information into my system? And we can also think about how deep is this collaboration? Is it just a human providing labels to an agent? Is it a human and AI interacting? Or can I really think about teaming where a human and an AI can accomplish a goal accomplish a task better than either could do independently. In addition to ultimately coming up with and testing this hypothesis in a pilot study, you're also going to gain some general experience. So we will be using some existing code bases, downloading and running them, understanding what that code does. We'll also be reading research papers. In addition to just understanding what the paper is saying, we'll also be critiquing them, trying to figure out what is a good paper, what makes one paper better than another. And we're going to have disagreements on that. Not everyone's going to agree the same papers are as exciting as others. So while we're presenting and critiquing this research, we will also be writing our own research. And that's where this pilot study will come in. So yes, we are in a pandemic, so I want to try to make this class as accessible and as exciting as it can be given the constraints. So first off, there will be some lectures by me, but also some guest lectures as we are able to invite some people um, from, from outside of the university and, and inside the university to contribute on some topics. There will also be reading and there'll be some discussions on Discord. In addition to all of these asynchronous things, there will also be synchronous online discussions. So if you're taking the course for credit, you'll be expected to be at some of these um, online interactions. Also, because we're doing everything online, I figured this was a good opportunity to record this course and make it public. So this is a bit of a risk to me because I am making up this course for the first time and putting it online. 
And a smarter thing to do would be to teach this course two or three times, get it in good shape, and then put it online. But I decided I would rather get this content out there and available because there is not a ton of information on interactive machine learning. So even if, it's, if this content is imperfect, hopefully it'll still be useful to you. Also, I'll point out, unlike in normal classes, you will be able to um, pause, back up, slow down, look at captions. Because this is a class, there needs to be some kind of assessment. There will be ways to get easy points. So there will be some asynchronous quizzes just to make sure that people do the reading. And then there'll be some discussions that will give you a chance to process the material and really engage with it. Things that will take a little bit more time are really reading and understanding papers. If you haven't read papers before, we will talk a bit about that, about how, how to read a research paper and how to figure out how to invest time. You also get some experience presenting a paper to the class. This could be you recording a video or doing it in a synchronous setting, but then leading a synchronous discussion on that paper. The things that will take the most time in this class are coming up with some hypothesis to test and a study that can test it then running that pilot study, coming up with a report that explains what you are doing, and then eventually uh, presenting that re uh, report, presenting those findings to the class, as well as submitting a paper. I often get the question, where are you from? Which is a little bit tricky. Um, so very briefly, I wanted to just say that I was born in Vermont, grew up in New Hampshire, went to high school in Connecticut, went to college in Massachusetts, was a software developer for a couple of years in Madison, and then went to grad school in 2003, where I started doing reinforcement learning. Then in 2008, I did a postdoc um, at the University of Southern California, where I got more into multi-agent systems. After that, I went to a teaching school where I started thinking more about humans teaching reinforcement learning agents, and then agents teaching reinforcement agents. So since uh, since about 2011, my research has really had these three foci. So thinking about how one robot could teach another robot, or one agent could teach another agent, how a human could teach an agent, and how an agent could teach a human. I moved to Washington State University, where we uh, started doing additional experiments with physical robots, and it was there that I started getting into intelligent tutoring systems, thinking about how an agent could teach a uh, human. 2017, I moved up to Edmonton, and since around 2019, I've been working on explainability and reinforcement learning. And you might think that explainability could be useful because if an agent could explain itself, or if that agent was interpretable, then the human might be able to teach it better. And then I joined the U of A last April. All of this is to say I've been interested in human learning agent interaction for a while now. And I'm very interested in using this class to get more people to know more about this area and understand why it's exciting. Where does that leave us? Well, if you'd like to take this class for credit, you should have some programming background and you should have taken at least one machine learning class. At the undergraduate level, if you've only done online classes like Coursera, you should probably talk to me to make sure you've got the tools you need to succeed. If you're, if you're at U of A and would just like to audit the class, you are welcome to do that. I have a slight preference for people uh, signing up for the audit so that not only does it show up on your transcript, but then we get uh, credit for teaching the class to an additional student. However, if you would prefer to just sit in on the class, whether you're at UA, U of A or not, you're more than welcome to. And all of this will be freely available online. The most important thing is that we figure out how to build up this community, that we get more people understanding what interactive machine learning is and get more people interested in this, I think, very important area. So I will continue to update the web page as well as setting up a Discord server and an email list. But I look forward to interacting with you all starting in September.